So I have a, a money saving tip, first of all, is to have value in my presentation this morning. Um, I uh, am an Appleholic, and uh, so I got the upgrade to the new iPhone and went into the Apple store to get it, I mean, excuse me, the AT&T store where I have my service to get it, uh, to get the SIM card and get it going. And my wife, turns out, has an iPhone 6. So if you are um, on AT&T and you have an iPhone 6, they're giving you one of these for free as an upgrade, and I'm new 7, just so you know. Okay, for those of you who forgot your virtual helmets this morning, we'll just try to be gentle to make sure that nobody gets hurt in this, because what we're going to talk about um, is pretty much the inverse of everything you've ever heard about mortgages. And um, we're going to be talking about uh, reverse mortgage and, um, you know, I mean, mortgages come in so many, come in so many stripes. Sometimes when I talk about them, I kind of feel like I'm a character in Forrest Gump talking about gypsum, gypsums and pelocks and, you know, FHA reverse mortgages and conventional loans and jumbo loans and things like that. My world is full of acronyms and kind of meaningless names to most people. The reverse mortgage is a mortgage that suits the needs of some people, though not all, who are of a certain age. Um, we might say 65 or more. In fact, you have to be 65 to be eligible for a reverse mortgage. And what makes it different is that it takes the equity in your home and pays that back to you over a period of time. So the loan works in reverse the way that most mortgages work. In most mortgages, you borrow a chunk of money and you buy a house and then you start making payments on that house over the course of years and if you don't die before it pays off, um, you know, you eventually get it paid off. Now let's say you've worked, you've worked, you've lived in that house and you've got that house paid off and you're now 65 and you've got this chunk of equity. And I'm going to give you a real example in a minute. You've got this chunk of, chunk of equity, you've got a few bucks in some uh, retirement accounts, you're going to get your Social Security, maybe you're getting a pension or something like that, but it's just not quite enough to live the way that you would like to live. Maybe you want to travel a little bit more, go over to Branson, Missouri and see Dolly or something like that. You know? so, um, so the reverse helps you with that, the reverse mortgage helps you with that. It is a government um, insured loan, so it's an FHA loan, meaning that uh, taxpayers are helping you with all of this. I know that's going to offer some comfort and joy to some of you. And um, so, let's check my notes here. So there are three ways that you, well, let me, let me start a little bit higher. The government has uh, hired a bunch of actuaries to try to predict how long you're going to live. They're also useful in the insurance industry and when financial planners talk about how much you can take out of your plan, they're looking at some actuarial support for taking that amount every month based on how long you're going to live. The government has also determined that house values tend to go up over time. Yes, we had Black Swan event in 2008 caused by the government um, that uh, resulted in house prices falling for the first time in 65 years. Now all of those house price values, all of those home values, pretty much everywhere in the United States are higher now than they were in 2008. So there's some history that would tell us that your home is going to continue to appreciate in value. There are places in the United States where that would not be true, but Colorado is certainly not one of them, particularly along the front range. So the government scratched their head and they said, gosh, let's see, if home values are going up and we loan people, we give them money, um, that is an amount, of, we'll just use a rough number, of half of what the value of their home is. We let them borrow that much. And then we let them not make a payment. And we'll just add the interest to that loan every month. What happens? Well, what happens is the appreciation on your home pretty much takes care of that interest that you're not paying. So that at the end of the period of time when you can no longer live in the home, there is still something there for your heirs and, and estate. And that's going to be true in most cases. 
The sheet I passed around in front of you shows you some of this in the form of an illustration. This is a real plan. This is somebody I'm working with right now. And there are two assumptions. One assumption is that the value of your home is going to increase 4% a year. And the other is it assumes the interest rate. The interest rate is a variable interest rate. It's tied to the London Interbank Offered Rate, it's called. Um, and then there's some additional margin over that that determines, that some of those two numbers determines the interest rate. So the interest rate does vary. Yes, ma'am. I apologize, but it just helps my brain. So are we in pounds sterling or euros? This is expressed in dollars. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the interest rate then is going to vary over years. We don't know what that's going to be. Right now, the, the LIBOR, annual LIBOR index, if you will, is at historic lows. I mean, truth be told, it's in negative numbers because the LIBOR is less than inflation right now. Um, now, when you make the determination that it might be nice to have um, this type of loan, one of the things that might drive that determination is that you're currently making a payment on the mortgage. You've owned your house for 25 years, but you refinanced it someplace along the way, and now you've got a mortgage that's still there, and you're making the payment on that mortgage, which makes it even harder for you to uh, live your life comfortably the way you would like to live it, because right off the top comes that mortgage payment. In the case of this illustration, what I'm trying to demonstrate is that that first new loan lump sum payment to you is enough to pay off that mortgage. So now your mortgage payment goes away altogether. You're not making a mortgage payment anymore. You are still going to have to pay the taxes and the insurance on the property, and you're going to have to maintain it. And the government's going to require that you be able to demonstrate that you have the financial capacity to do that. So whereas in times past, if you had a breath, I could get you a reverse mortgage. If you could still fog a mirror. Didn't matter what your credit was, didn't matter what your income was, didn't matter if you had a pulse, I just needed to fog, fog that mirror um, and we could get it done. Nowadays, we have to show that you're going to have an ongoing ability with some income sources and some assets to pay the taxes and the insurance.